Okay, so we have Italy declaring war now, with all that background, declaring war on Britain, and uh, fearing that they're going to be seized by, uh, by uh, Germany and by the Italians. The British now start a campaign of bombing the Vichy France Navy. When uh, France was overrun, they set up the Vichy government, the Navy came under that Vichy government. And it was a real threat because it was a big, it was a big Navy. And we won't go along as we go along, but just know that throughout this Italian, or the, the, all three of these areas, throughout these campaigns we're gonna talk about, there was a continual bombing and raids on the Vichy French Navy. Some ter terrific uh, battles to eliminate that Navy. And we did, uh, I'm just indicating some areas where some of that occurred. And I mentioned again, Malta is very important. This is kind of an interesting thing. After, in uh, 1922, when Mussolini became the head of the government, this poster appeared all over Italy. Anybody know what that says? That uh, word for down at the bottom is revenge. And Mussolini saw that that just got up everywhere in Italy. And if you look at that post up close, you see that Italian soldier standing on a pile of dead British soldiers. That's so all. He started this propaganda thing to whip the people up to get them to the point where they uh, invaded uh, North Africa. And British Somalia Lion, as I mentioned. And again, I want to emphasize, I keep showing that because it's a major, major theater that we don't hear much about. Okay, now, the desert. We're in the desert now. We're getting into the uh, actual story of Rommel, perhaps. But uh, that had to be about the most unhospitable area to ever fight in. It's terrible. And it's referred to by many historians as Hell's Battleground, as the Germans did. And uh, if you look across the great expanse of it, up to 120, 125 degrees during the day, and the thing that uh, seems kind of odd is at night, it could be 60 degrees colder. And the troops oftentimes dug foxholes not to protect themselves, but to bury themselves in, pull sand on top of them because they didn't have winter type uh, gear to keep them warm. So keeping warm at night was just a ferocious or a terrible thing. So 60 degrees sometimes. Uh, dust storms. We were looking at that dust storm. And out of nowhere could come these huge clouds of dust. The sand, or not dust storm, I'm sorry, sand storm. The sand in the desert was just like talcum powder, very, very fine. And huge clouds of it would come and visibility could be two or three feet. It would happen it that quick, and it was that, uh, that thick. I put in this uh, group of Italians eating, I was gonna talk about their food here in a minute, and indicate that uh, they all said that their food contained half flies and half sand. It had to be a terrible, terrible problem. And if water was needed, it all had to be shipped in. There are no wells. They could find very little natural water, so they had to bring it in to where the troops were. The troops didn't have the, the uh, convenience of picking where they were going to bivouac or stop or put in a defensive position, so water had to be brought in. And it's interesting that especially the Germans would take gasoline, strip down, five-gallon bucket of gasoline, and dip their uniforms in and out of it. That killed the bugs, they got rid of the grease, and I got rid of the salt that was keeping, that was coming out of their bodies and all that heat and sweat. So terrible, terrible conditions, but it really did happen that way. Uh, insects, uh, there were a lot of insects that were adapted to the drought. They were just about all poisonous. There were spiders, there were scorpions, there were lizards, all kinds of things. So. Uh, all the troops, all the troops uh, would end up with several of these uh, bites from these insects and these little varmints. And I've seen photographs from North Africa, and the first time I saw one, I thought, there's so many bandages on these arms of these soldiers about what it is, was, as I found out. Uh, 
they're covering up these festering bites. They get sand in them. They don't have enough antiseptic for them, and they, uh, they just get very gross pus-filled pustules. So it's terrible, terrible conditions. And there's the fly that everybody hated. The, the flies uh, needed water just, just like the people did. So anything that had moisture associated with it, the fly is headed right for it. That could be the corner of your eye where the tears are. It could be the sweat on your back, under your arm. It could be what you were drinking. It could be what you were eating. The flies just swarmed to get that moisture. So it was everywhere. I put that in just to show some flies on some of the food. And I put in a comment that it's real, the ROM will really make. I cannot tell if I'm eating flies or raisins. That's how bad it was. Might mention here too while I'm thinking of it. It's interesting to note that the Italians, when they get into North Africa, the officers ate in tents with mosquito netting, they ate off tables with linens on them, they drank wine, they wore white uniforms, they really had a good, and outside in all this sand, the troops are putting up with all this hell's uh, battleground, so to speak. So anyway, the Italians had quite a different slant on things, the officers. I put these in, just uh, everybody seemed to be interested in, uh, in equipment, and you just notice, uh, uh, that uh, the top one is a Fiat uh, 611, is a World War I tank or a vehicle that the uh, Italians brought, all these first in red letters are Italian. Somebody asked a question already, how come the, Allen, uh, the Italians fared so poorly in some of these battles? Why did they lose so much equipment? Remember that Mussolini developed all his might not long after World War I ended. And that's when he built this great force up. But he built it up with technology of that day. And by the time World War I got around, he had this huge armada, old technology, the Germans and the Americans and the British, by comparison, had newer technology. So the, my point is that answers that question uh, somewhat, or why they did so terrible. But anyway, 